G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Bitcoin was getting oh so close to 60,000 again and we've just got a hard rejection from it. It really does feel like 60k is going to take some time to break. Just as soon as it gets close, there's big sell-offs straight away. And I think you know a lot of it is retail investors selling as well that have been around for a while. But I also think it's probably the miners as well. They're just happy to sell Bitcoin at 60,000. They're holding on to it. And when it gets to that kind of $59,000 mark, boom, they're selling a whole lot. Now, whether that's the actual case or not, I don't know. I couldn't find any information about that. But as this crash has only just happened in the last sort of, you know, two or three hours or so. And I mean, it's not exactly a big crash. We went from 59,000 down to sort of 57,000. So it's not a big crash. But anyway, it's probably something that was a little bit unexpected. But look, Bitcoin's still going up over seven days. A lot of these coins are. So over the last week, not so bad. But we've definitely had a very hard and quick rejection from that kind of not quite 60K mark, 59,000. Now, as we can see, we're still 1.8 trillion though, and nearly 1.85 trillion, so not too bad. Bitcoin dominance still around 58%, ETH dominance around 11%, and gas around 137. All right, we can see it's a bit of a mixed bag in there, but really a lot of red in the last 24 hours and definitely in the last hour. So let's have a look. 24 hours. Has anything really pumped in the last 24 hours? I'm going to say some things have because we were doing not too bad until not so long ago. There we go, BitTorrent up, Filecoin's doing extremely well, Mars Network, uh, Nervos, Holo, Pundi, Pundi X Old, I didn't know there was a Pundi X Old uh, or a Pundi X New, but there you go. Pundi, Tron, there we go, Icon, 0x, Monero. So we've definitely had some movers. Only a couple of really good ones, and I guess, you know, 14.9, we can round that up by 0.1% and call it 15%. So Nervous Mask, Filecoin and BitTorrent are doing quite well. So that's really, really good. But losses, let's have a look. What about losses in the last 24 hours? I know in the last hour we've definitely had some. So there we go, Phantom's come down, the graph has come down. I am looking to start building some more, uh, a better position in graph again, because it's been coming down for a while. Uh, Algorand, Avalanche, Swissborg and look, None of these losses are too bad, really. Again, 15% over 24 hours is kind of my mark. If it goes up by 15, it's doing well. If it goes down by more than 15, then it's doing pretty bad. So we don't have any coins that are doing pretty bad. They've just had pullbacks, and that's to be expected after the kind of, you know, mini alt season that we've been through. And look, you know, still sort of going through. Some alt coins are still doing really well. But I just get the feeling like things are cooling off a little bit at the moment. I'm not sure we have enough retail buying pressure to push the Bitcoin price up because the big dogs, they're waiting for the dips. That's all they're doing is they're buying the dips. They're not jumping in at 60000 like a lot of retail would. They are waiting for the dips, and that's why it's not going down by so much. I just don't know if they're going to start jumping in at 60000 I think they really are waiting for 57000 and, you know, eventually, don't get me wrong, it'll be 58000 and that'll be 59000 but that's just going to be a slow burn. We need more retail money, new money to come in and be happy to buy it at sort of $60,000. Because at the moment, we've just been going sideways for a while. And this could last, you know, for a prolonged period. How long? I don't know. And is that a guarantee? Absolutely not. I never offer financial advice. I'm not sure that that's what, you know, I'm not 100% sure I should say that that's exactly what it's going to do. But I am somewhat confident because we've just been in this pattern for a while. We're just kind of ranging. And we'll go ahead and have a look at the Bitcoin chart. So we can see over here, we're just sort of ranging sideways. And we saw we had that confirmed breakout and we've simply come back down and retested this. So this could be more of this. And we just kind of keep going around and get the paintbrush. So we could see more of this. And this is what we could see for a while before we break up. Now, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, but it could be something like this. It could take a while. Again, retail is not really jumping in at the moment. They're selling. They're panic selling. That's generally what is happening. Uh, that's why we're sort of chopping all over the place. But again, also miners. I think the miners are definitely, as soon as Bitcoin gets around this 60K mark, they're pretty happy to sell there. 
but I don't think the institutional buyers are really, you know, all that keen to jump in at sixty thousand. If it dips down to fifty seven, fifty eight thousand, they'll absolutely buy the dip, but they're not sort of going all in. So we really need the next lot of retail FOMO to sort of come for us to go that next leg. At least that's what I think. That's my personal opinion. All right, so again, are we going to see something like this play out where it's a lot of sideways action and even, you know, a low that might really scare people before we then sort of break up? So again, maybe another bit of a fake out. It feels like we're almost going to go over that new all-time high. Then we go to a low that is just a little bit lower than what we've been to before again. So a little bit lower than 51,000. Really scare people before we then start to make another move. Time will tell, we'll see. All right, only a couple of stories that I'm going to go with tonight because it's pretty late here. I've had a long day and there's not that much interesting news out there uh, that I've been able to find. All right, so this one though, and this is really sad, scam apps on Apple. So the actual Apple uh, Apple's uh, store, you know, be very, very careful about what you download. So I'll read on. So Apple removed the fake Trezor app several times, but it kept appearing on the App Store days later. So I don't know what's going on here. They really need to check that because someone has lost a ton of money. A scam cryptocurrency app on Apple's app distribution service, uh, Apple Store, has reportedly stolen over half a million dollars in Bitcoin from one iOS user. That is, yeah, that's horrible. That really, that'd be hard to take. Uh, Christo Delau, I don't know how to say that, went on the App Store last month to search for a mobile Trezor app to check his Bitcoin balance via phone. Unaware that the Trezor does not currently provide an iOSA app, uh, Christo Delau uh, downloaded a doppelganger Trezor application that boasted close to five stars. So again, even the five stars and everything, giving the impression that it was indeed an official app. After entering his seed phrase, Chris DeLue said that his savings of 17 Bitcoin were stolen. Oh, that is really, yeah, that's terrible. There's no other way to say it. So anyone who's watching my videos, please be careful. Don't, yeah, do lots of research, you know, go to the main uh, site and again, be, you know, make sure it's the main site. You can tell it's the main site by the little boxes that'll come up in the side that it's not an ad, a lot of the time the ads actually lead you to fake uh, sites. They don't lose, lead you to the real one. So be very, very careful because you know most people would believe that, all right, it's on the App Store, it's got to be legit, there's the five stars, and then you, know, you lose everything, your life savings, over half a million dollars. I mean, yeah, that's a lot of money in anyone's books, you know, unless... Uh, outside of the ultra rich but any you know person outside of that they yeah i mean your life savings that's everything you pretty much don't have much else i just hope that you know maybe apple can help him out some way there or they probably won't or you know the community can get together and maybe help him out and yeah terrible all right moving on NFTs, they just continue to grow. So here we go. Basketball legend Michael Jordan and Hollywood icon Will Smith are among a group of investors in Dapper Lab's latest funding round. And they raised over $305 million. So there's some big money going into N uh, NBA Top Shot maker Dapper Labs. So NBA Top Shot maker Dapper Labs has secured about $305 million in new funding round from investors. According to a report by Business Insider on Tuesday, past and present NBA stars like Michael Jordan, Alex Caruso and Kevin Durant participated in the funding round. Other investors inc included the Chern uh, Chernin Group and Will Smith's venture capital outfit, Dreamers VC. So NFTs, this, yeah, it's going to be big. I know a lot of you know, sort of older people won't really understand it. And, you know, you hear people out there saying, oh, but it's just a JPEG. Why would you pay so much for a JPEG? It is a JPEG, but it's a one-of-a-kind or a two-of-a-kind sort of JPEG that actually has something behind it. It's not just the image. It's the code that goes behind it that says that it is a limited edition. And you will be able to use those things in the future. Yes, it can be copied, but it's, you know, it's like taking a photo of the Mona Lisa. That doesn't mean you've got the Mona Lisa. That just means you've got an image, uh, sorry, uh, a copy of that image. And it's going to be the same thing with these. They are going to be special JPEGs and, you know, whatever format they're in, they're not just simply a JPEG. All right, last but not least, 
So the sort of flash crash that we just had, I do think there's definitely some manipulation going on there. I think the other uh, miners, some whales most likely, and some exchanges have probably got together and boom, just wiped out a whole stack of longs and even some shorts. Because you can see here, $600 million worth of both long and short positions were liquidated in minutes as Bitcoin's price took a dive and lost around $3,000 in just minutes. Bitcoin went through a sudden crash in today's European morning trading session, losing around 3000 of its dollar value in less than an hour. It is almost always the case this caused, uh, this caused a serious wave of liquidations throughout the entire market with over $600 million of leverage positions wiped out. So there's people out there who can see where the long and shorts kind of go and they know how far they have to push it down to blow all the longs uh, and then how far they have to push it up to push past all the shorts as well. So, yeah, again, it, it wouldn't surprise me if it is miners uh, and some, which are whales, basically. Whales, exchanges, uh, sorry, uh, exchanges and miners, they're whales. And I wouldn't be surprised if they've done that because they can uh, put a long or a short position on and push it the other way. Uh, they've got plenty of money so they can even buy a whole stack of Bitcoin to push the longs up and then they can sell a whole ton while shorting it and they're making more and more Bitcoin both on the way up and the way down. And look, I've said this before, that's why I don't leverage trade. I'm not sure I ever will. You know, Sometimes I think, oh, I wouldn't mind having a go. You hear the stories about how much money some people are making but the thing is they don't really tell you about how much money they're losing at times. So, you know, yeah, for me, I don't leverage trade. I never have and, you know, most likely probably never will. It's just, it's too hard. It's all right if you get in nice and early and it's part of a really big pump sweep. But outside of that, yeah, the volatility is too much. I just like to invest and then I don't have to worry about, you know, these $3,000 swings. I mean, it doesn't make any difference to me. I'm willing to hold and this $3,000 that I've lost, you know, or gained, whether it was going up or down, it's not going to make too much of a difference to me in the long term, just in the short term. All right, that's it for me. I'm not going to take up too much more of your time. It is late here where I am, and I do need to get up uh, and go to work again tomorrow. So stay safe, particularly in this kind of climate. Uh, yeah, stay safe. Be kind to one another. If you're on that game train, congratulations to you. You're probably one of the whales and the miners that you know got uh, rid of all these, uh, liquidated everyone's longs and shorts. So congratulations to you, and I'll see you next time.